Hey guys, so the other week I created a video series showing um, how to get power from a microwave using a loop antenna and making sparks based off of that. Now, that is pretty um, interesting in and of itself, but I'd like to do some more useful work with it. Um, before we can get into that, really, um, I wanted to show using the microwave and the loop antenna with the microwave in particular as a power source. Now, these loop antennas, which I've made a couple here, um, these have resistive elements added to them. And they are of different values. So you can see the different values here. This one is 100K. This one, I don't quite remember. I think it's uh, 1.8K. Um, this one's a 330 ohm. And this one is a 100 ohm. Now, the value of the ohms is analogous to the impedance of the load. And then this is the source here. Now, this wire doesn't generate energy of itself. It's coupling into the microwave. So the magnetron on this guy, which is back here, is sending energy waves out. And by energy waves I mean electromagnetic waves that are uh, of the microwave frequency, 2.45 gigahertz. And think of them as light. Think of it as a light bulb, sort of like that one. It's just sending out light waves, boom, all the way out. And these light waves interact with this loop, which causes current to flow back and forth very quickly. Current being, you know, electrons moving within the wire. And this interacts with whatever is connected to it. And in this case, I'm just using a purely resistive element. Now, what I'm hoping to demonstrate here is that with what we saw last week was an open loop. So instead of there being a resistive element, there was just air. <clears throat> and current would move back and forth and would build up at the edge of the wire and would build up to an extent where there would be a voltage difference between them and it would arc across. Now, with a resistive element, some current will begin to flow through. And with as the resistive element decreases, that is, as the resistance gets lower, more current can flow through. And if too much current flows through, then you just have current flowing, but there's no voltage difference. If you have too little resistance, which I think this guy will, there's too much voltage, not enough current. So there's sort of a sweet spot. Now, there's an equation, um, power is equal to voltage times current. So the power of these resistors that's being burned across these resistors, in this case probably quite literally, will um, vary based on what the resistance is. The more resistance, the fewer, lower the current, but the higher the voltage. The lower the resistance, the higher the current, and the lower the voltage. And there's probably a sweet spot. Now, um, in the case of this loop antenna, I believe it's going to be about 100 ohms, so this one should have the most interesting effects. What we'll probably see is that these, the resistance won't offer enough of path, so it'll probably arc across it, and you'll see something resembling a light show. Whereas these <coughs> will have more of a heating effect to it, because instead of the power being burned across as arcs moving back and forth here, it's actually going to heat this resistor up, and if it's fully 100 ohms, we're actually going to use full power that this antenna can pick up into this resistor, which will probably cause it to either fracture apart or, you know, maybe even explode. Uh, we'll see. So, so let's stick these guys into the microwave and see what kind of damage we can cause. This is the 100 kilohm resistor into the microwave. Let's see what happens.
Now that was only on for about five seconds, but we can already see there's a pretty significant heating that occurred across this guy. You can clearly see that the right-hand side of this guy is much darker than the left-hand side. So, it has undergone a little bit of a change. Let's go for a little bit longer. It's already a little bit damaged, so I'm not sure what this is going to look like. Let's go for a little bit longer, like 10 seconds or so, and see what happens. That didn't need to add 10 So about 7 seconds in, there was a bright flash and this resistor has carbonized and there are little pieces of carbon floating around. Um, the resistor is completely blackened and if I poke it with something, it'll probably fall apart. Well, it's not really falling apart. However, it is leaving a mess. Interesting. So remember, that was 100 kiliohms. Our target is 100 ohms. So, we should start seeing more destructive effects. We didn't really see much of an arcing. We saw a little bit of a plasma, which was that bright flash. But, not a lot of arcing. Now, up here is interesting too. This is starting to burn here. And this is where the tape was. So, it seems like it's interacting a little bit with the tape. Um, I don't know if that's a thermal thing, if the tape is just heating up, if the whole wire is heating up and the tape is starting to catch fire, or if there's a little power transfer to the tape or something like that. At these frequencies, eh, it could be possible. Probably not as likely. Probably more of a thermal effect. Uh, I don't know enough about the physics on that to really say. But uh, let's, uh, let's try a different one. This is the Kiliom range resistor. Like I said, I believe this one's 1 1.8. Although, don't quote me on that. Um. Okay, now it took about 10 seconds last time. Um, actually, it took about 7 seconds. So, I'll try for 8. Well, this is a fresh one, so let's try for 10. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Whoa! Much faster! And there's a little bit of fire. Okay, it's gone now. Okay, I should close that. So, that is what off an atrocious smell. And there's a little bit of smoke. It looks like the tape had caught fire at some point. So, uh, don't want to stop my throat detector, it'd probably wake my neighbors. So, I'm going to let that sit for a second, and then brave it. Now that is actually quite amazing. Um, there is a large pool of carbon, it looks like, at the bottom. And the resistor is even more blackened, even more blackened than it was before. Um, or the previous one was, rather. This one's just... <clears throat> just flaking apart. Not quite breaking apart yet, but much weaker than the last one. So just for comparison, this was the 100 kiliohm. This is the last one we did, the 1.8. And it is a much different color. It has a lot of silver kind of exposed in the middle there. So this one definitely suffered more energy than this one did, which is interesting. Um, so remember, we, we're still about an order of magnitude away from our ideal, so to speak, target. So and you can definitely see there's a lot more energy that went into this one much quicker than this one. So this could be interesting. Uh, this is the 330 of them. Let's see what this is. I'm only going to put this one on for 5 seconds. I think that'll be enough. Mm 
And we're on fire again. Seems to have gone out. I'm going to give it a second or two to uh, simmer out there before I open it up. It'll probably... Ooh, yeah, it already smells like a good bit of smoke out of it. Alright, let's see what we've got. Whew. There is a horrendous smell from this microwave oven right now. And this resistor here, well, it's, uh, it's not looking too good. So this one is 330. That's the 1 1.8 and that's the 100. You can definitely see there's a trend of more damage being done to it. This one has grooves cut in it now. Um, and looks like some slag around on the outside here, which is molten metal. And it's, uh, can't quite cut through it either, but it's, uh, it's flaking out a lot. A lot of little flakes coming off of it. Um, it got some damage. It is not looking too hot right now. So here's the 100 ohm. And now, one thing to mention too, Whereas the other resistors were half watt. This one is smaller. This is the only one I have in my kit right now. So this might actually be a lot more damage. It's not really fair, but we'll do it. And we shall go for the five second rule once more. And the tape is on fire again. Okay, I can see smoke inside from the screen now. I'm sure it's hard to see. I'm going to let that sit for a second. And that is a gag-inducing smell right there. And there we have it. It is almost completely white on this side and very dark on this side. And definitely flaking off a lot, although I was expecting it to almost get cut in half, but it seems like it failed before that happened. Um, not quite sure what happened there, but it's, a, it's an interesting contrast. So that's 100 ohm, 330, 1.8, and 100K, 1.8K. So definitely seems like the damage is going up, although... This one suffered more damage on the outside, whereas this one seems like it got more penetrated through. They're both kind of in the same order of magnitude of destructive potentials. Now, you also notice, too, that I didn't exactly have the resistors well tied on here. I didn't bother to solder it or anything. I just sort of wrapped them around until uh, the multimeter stopped reading, uh, and it, you know, the resistance across and started reading closer to zero. So, um, connections could have been a little bit bad, but I'm sure they were good enough. I mean, obviously they were good enough to get most of the energy into the resistor. The connections looked relatively undamaged, um, except on this one where connections blackened here, which means most of the energy went to the end of this. It skipped all this, it went to here, and then went through. It's interesting. Same thing happened here. Um, this one... The connections actually seem pretty good. It's actually got a lot of damage here, which is interesting. So, I'm not sure what to make of it. Another thing I wanted to demonstrate in this video, and uh, maybe I'll demonstrate this next time, is now that we have a power source and a sink for this energy, that we can do something not useful with yet, but at least do something with, um, we need some way to transmit that energy. So I created this. This is a waveguide. And this is the effect from earlier, which wasn't quite as crazy as the effects we just saw with the loop antennas. But what happened was I put this in front of the magnetron, and you can see that this part is completely untouched. And this part is relatively far away from this part, yet the energy has gone through here into this resistor and it is very obviously damaged it. You can see the damage a little better up close there. Um, didn't exactly have the greatest connection on this one either, but 
that did the job. And you can also see that the rest of this wiring is pretty much unharmed. So, the interesting thing is, even though this was about 10,000 watts, um, I'm sorry, 1,000 watts power, it didn't really scorch this wiring up very much. And I don't remember what value resistor I used for this. It's totally unreadable now. It was, it was pretty close to 100 ohms from what I remember. Um, so you would expect to see a lot of scoring through here, but there really isn't much. And that's pretty analogous to what we see here. Even though this top part was relatively damaged, there's some scoring around on the outsides here and there, but for the most part, these loops are pretty much unharmed. And this one in particular is very unharmed. It's almost pristine. I could probably turn around and use this thing again. Um, I did use water when I used this guy, so I think there was less overall energy in the system than there were for these other uh, loop guys here. These are getting full brunt and probably getting a standing wave rather than effect causing an even greater effect. But this one still caused enough damage to this resistor to be significant. And it's just interesting. Um, now one thing that you teach you in the microwave class, and something I hope to demonstrate later, is that the energy is actually not being transmitted through these copper wires. It sits on the edge of the copper, sure, but most of the energy is going through the dielectric. And in this case, despite the fact that I have tape every now and again to hold the thing together, most of the energy is going to be going through air. Now, it's not too hard to believe, especially for a microwave oven. The energy is already going through the air in the oven anyway. This is just offering sort of a guide for it to go through. It's wave guide. So the loop antenna sort of captures the energy it sort of gets stuck in here and causes loops. Now, I mentioned earlier that, you know, it causes the electrons to flow back and forth in the wiring, and that's for the most part true, but it's not exactly true either. Um, it's all a wave kind of dynamics going to it. So, um, it's useful to think of it in terms of electrons sometimes, but it definitely breaks down after a while. And a lot of it's because the energy is flowing through here more than it's flowing through here. It's definitely interesting. So in this video I haven't really gone into great detail as to you know what exactly your resistance or impedance is, but you can see, you know, the effects of it. There is a characteristic impedance of this antenna, and now we just sort of went from a high resistance to a lower resistance. Um, I did want to show at some point that uh, you have to match this. So if you were to, if we were to go lower than that 100 ohm, eventually we would actually stop seeing as much energy go through and we'd see less and less of an effect. Um, I'll probably end up making a future video to show that. But uh, this VO here, which is the property of the antenna, roughly 100, and this R, that's roughly 100, you have maximum power transfer between these two. When this is something more like 100,000, then you don't have as much power transfer. Now, there's still enough power transfer to damage this resistor quite significantly, but remember we're putting 1,000 watts into this, and this resistor was only rated for about a half watt. So we're kind of judging based off the, you know, quant qualitative effects we see on the resistor, like there's less scorching on the 100K than there is on the 100, um, it's not pitted, um, the plasma took a lot longer to take effect, remember we ran it for 5 seconds, saw very little, and then opened it up and saw there was a little damage across the resistor, ran it again, and then it took about 7 seconds before it actually built plasma around it, which the plasma, um, it doesn't look like a traditional spark, but you can kind of think of it as that sparking through, it's burning off the carbon on the resistor. Um, whereas the 100 ohms, within less than five seconds, was already on fire, already arcing, um, already being torn completely apart, and um, at the end of five seconds had fallen onto the, the uh, bottom surface of the microwave. Uh, much more, much more dramatically pronounced effect.
when we added a transmission line between the antenna and the resistor, we added a path for the energy to flow from the loop antenna to the resistor. Now, the transmission line also has an impedance associated with it. Um, in this case here, I calculated it to be about 330 ohms, this one to be about 100 ohms. We'll get into later, you know, how this makes a difference, but we could already see earlier that 100 ohms here and 330 ohms here was less power than if this was 100 and this was 100. So, if this is a higher impedance, we can already make the, you know, hypothesis that less power will flow through. And I'll hope to prove in a later video that this is correct. Um, there's also a lot of things about these transmission lines that are very interesting effects. Um, we'll have to discuss more on this later. Um, there are effects that happen because this is a wave and it's traveling back and forth within a set period of time. The distance of this line makes a lot of difference in how it actually interacts between the source and the load. In, in traditional RF engineering, you call this the generator and the load, um, even though this isn't really generating anything. It's a mnemonic. Um, so we hope to explore this more in a later video with you all, and I hope that even though I'm sort of throwing out a lot of terms that may not make a lot of sense right now, that we're at least able to see how these affect things. Um, there's a property of these materials that we don't really see right now. Uh, it's called the impedance, and um, it seems to show up when we push large amounts of microwave energy into these materials. Um, in this case, the antenna, which is made out of copper, this transmission line, which is copper, um, there's also air in between all of these and some tape every now and again, and um, this resistor, which um, a lot of you may not be familiar with, but they are uh, very simply a small piece of carbon placed in the middle with wires attached to either end, and you adjust the size of that carbon and you know, its path and all sorts of other things to determine how much energy can flow through this resistor. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's how much current um, creates a voltage drop across it, and so forth. It doesn't really matter right now. Just know that um, this is sized, and it, this intrinsic property of these things can be set as a result of that, which is uh, somewhat helpful for us so we can play around with these numbers. Um, if we didn't know the... Uh, impedance of this, we could theoretically take a bunch of resistors of different values and just keep trying them until we see a peak in the effect. Um, so like, you know, see one one number gets the most destroyed out of all of them, and we could say, oh, you know, it's probably about that number. Um, again, I hope to do more future videos on this and show more of these sorts of demonstrations um, and uh, more fire. Uh, see you all later.